Hello and welcome. My name is Thomas Kalunge from the Rock Agency for Open Culture and Critical Transformation. Today we'll be exploring with you how the current situation of COVID-19 has played out in relation to migration and displacement. We will do this via audio snapshot of how our project partners have dealt with the situation in their respective locations and what challenges they have had to overcome. Before that, however, let me tell you a little bit about our organization. Rock Agency initiates and implements projects in a wide variety of areas, especially in open technologies, open knowledge, and peace building. We believe that many of the today's global problems can be solved with adoption of open culture, especially in the three previously mentioned areas. We are therefore majorly involved with grassroots and government organizations that have an interest to bridge gaps between policy and real on-the-ground action using open source methodologies. This we do in countries like Ghana, Cameroon, South Sudan, among others. In our presentation today, we will attempt to answer the question what challenges arise when implementing projects in a situation of conflict entangled in another conflict. We'll start off with Gala, who is the country project manager for the project Defy Hate Now in Cameroon. He will briefly talk about trade-offs that people are caught in in an internal conflict fueled by misinformation and disinformation, that is, flight versus stay. Our project partner Romeo from Platform Africa in Uganda will elaborate on how social distancing regulation brought about by the current COVID-19 play out in refugee settlements. And last but not least, Rhoda, our local coordinator and dealing with women and migration in Ghana, will cover the question of what choices do young women and girls have between rural urban migration in search of jobs and COVID-19 induced travel restrictions. Welcome and let all learn. Uh, my name is Ngala Desmond Ngala. I work for the Fire Hate Now Cameroon. Uh, I manage operations in Cameroon. Um, conflict, uh, conflicts and misinformation, I think these, these thematics are very, very important and uh, we are very keen to them. Uh, one, because uh, misinformation has contributed as a key player in conflict. I think at times people even move into conflicts because they, they, they don't have the right information and when the conflicts already exist, we have uh, people who flee away, uh, who move away from uh, their, 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 their homes simply because they've, they've had information that was not accurate or not, uh, that was not given out well. We see parties in conflict giving conflicting information or information that uh, is not accurate. And most of the times, this has led people uh, to move into trouble. Some have moved even into danger while trying to run to save heavens. We've seen people who've stayed because the information given to them said, hey, stay, there is no reason for you to move, and they, they found themselves in harm's way. And I think um, with the advent of COVID-19, this has been exacerbated and we've seen, we're seeing cases in which people are giving information that is completely out of play and push individuals or citizens more into danger. AskNet, Access to Skills and Knowledge Network, is a capacity building and hub development program linking five community-based youth-led innovation hubs in South Sudan and Uganda. The AskNet community aims to build a sustainable network of trainers and empowered individuals to address specific challenges their communities are facing and transform cultural patterns that fuel conflict and inequality. It does so by providing youth access to skills and knowledge through training of trainers, workshops and themes including open source hardware and software using the Ascotech Entrepreneurship, Media Production, Gender Equality, Awareness, Trauma Healing, and Financial Literacy. Some of the problems are like social distancing in the refugee camp, which is still a luxury in such a way that many refugees still believe in social contention than distancing. But here is a pandemic scenario, which has not been taken heed of. Meaning handshakes, meetings at closer distances is still a thing. But a few refugees have taken it serious to avoid this by tying ropes around their shops so that a distance is created between the customer and seller, and as well as others using elbows than handshakes and leaders enforcing the laws against social gatherings like funerals. My name is Wendam Kadwaruda, and I work for the Migrants Media Network project in Northern Region, Ghana. The Migrants Media Network it's a project by ROG Agency for Open Culture and Critical Transformation. 
This project provides young Africans with reliable information and training on migration issues and social media to make informed decisions and aware of safe migration options to Europe. This same project also promotes youth entrepreneurship at home as a way to build economic and social resilience, encouraging youth to create their own opportunities and work within their communities. The project in the northern region here also focuses on rural urban migration, where young women are involved in education as to how to reduce the rate at which they travel to urban cities to engage themselves in Kayayu. They are therefore also empowered on how to engage themselves in skills training that will enable them have access to decent source of income that will enable them support their families at home. During this period of COVID-19, it has reduced the risk at which these young mothers travel to the urban cities and at such that has increased the rate at which these women are seeking for skills training to be able to better themselves and their families. Thank you. We hope that our short presentation was able to give you insights on the situation our project partners have had to deal with on the ground. But if you have more questions or require more information, please do contact us. Thank you and goodbye.